So just because it's made in a column still does not mean that it is only a neutral spirit. It is a wide range that can be made. Um, and it really depends on what the producer is trying to create. And the other really nice part with a column still is that this is done in a continuous operation. So it's not they're creating their first, it's not done in batch. It, they, they are, it's able to continuously be operating as it goes through the column still. And so really what it looks when you've got your column still, you know, in front of you and sort of cut open, the bottom plate is going to be the liquid with the lowest ABV and your top plate is going to have your highest ABV. And anywhere, you know, depending on what the producer is wanting to create, they are able to determine the alcohol level that they want. They're able to determine the um, specific um, aromas that they're trying to pull off. And so there's a lot of com complexity going on here. So really just keep in mind, if you want a high alcohol um, spirit, you're gonna have to use a column still. It can create a neutral um, spirit, but it also can be used to create a pronounced spirit at a lower alcohol. So those are the biggest things to keep in mind when you're talking about a column still. Questions on column stills versus uh, uh, batch distillation and pot stills? Nope. No. Don't get lost in the complexity of it. <laughs> this is level one and even level two, it, it's pretty straightforward. So, all right. So we've gone through the first three steps where you have your first step is processing the raw material to create the sugary liquid and giving some of the uh, aromas. The second is creating the alcoholic fermentation to create the ethanol and aromas. The distillation is going to be concentrating of the ethanol and then post distillation operations. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. But let's talk, let's go ahead and do some tasting. So for the webinars, I have sent out an email uh, that there were six different spirits that I recommended for tasting. Um, if you can, I picked these ones in particular because generally you can, if you cannot find it in a 50 milliliter bottle, so there's some of them that are available in smaller sizes. So you don't necessarily have to buy 700 or 750 milliliters. The other thing I was going to say is I tried to pick things that are um, widely available. So for example, if you can only get a bottle of Lagavulin 8 and 750 milliliters and you don't wanna purchase a bottle of a peated single malt scotch, then here's my suggestion. Honestly, find a place, uh, a, a bar or a restaurant and just order um, <laughs> a Lagavulin 8 and t t write a tasting note. Truly, it's about just getting you to taste these. So if you don't have them available to you, that's, uh, I completely understand. And I will tell you most bars, especially some of your better end bars, if you just go and order, uh, you know, lag bowl and eight neat, or even just tell them like, hey, I've got to take this, I'm taking this class and I've never tried this. Could I have a taste of it? They'll generally work with you on this and charge you only not necessarily for a full uh, pour of a lag bowl and eight or Woodford Reserve. Mm -hmm. But so if you're having trouble, let me know and I can make some other suggestions. And truly it's about being able to find, being able to taste these. So 